Hello everybody, it's time for another Primetime Funk Mods review. This time around, I am going to be doing the uh, Retro 6 Clean Power board for the DMG. This is a pretty sweet little product where the idea is that um, it takes care of some of the power issues that come up when you're trying to put new ideas into old units. <laughs> so. Um, one of the issues that a lot of the old DMGs have is that a lot of the things we're putting in there, like the backlights and the uh, the new LCD screens, um, and completely replacing the front PCB altogether for some of the newer versions as well, um, the the original DMG just wasn't really designed to handle that kind of power. Now the new boards have done a good job of trying to to mitigate that by like watching voltage and trying specifically to match it to the old DMGs as they are. But when it really comes down to it, um, somebody needed to do something about uh, how the uh, the old DMGs handled power, and Retro6 and uh, their partner Handheld Legend decided to do something about it. So we have the V2 version of this one. Um, I was talking to, to Destin from Handheld Legend recently, and he was talking about the differences between the original first generation one, uh, that was more of just a, uh, a rectangular green board that still did the job, but it wasn't really built to be able to handle stuff like flash carts, which are pretty common these days. I wouldn't really be able to get through anything without my trusty EverDrive, uh, because I can switch it through between so many different units that I have. So I've got a few DMGs, I've got a, a few Game Boy Pockets, I've got a couple of Game Boy Colors, and uh, some GBA options as well. And this can actually switch between all of those to just seamlessly play my games. But um, the key is making sure that the DMG is still capable of actually processing the kind of power draw that the EverDrive needs. So um, that is apparently the main primary difference. Uh, for the V1, you still have to add a diode to it. Um, they've got the, uh, the specs and information up on the Retro6 website, as well as uh, some links from Handheld Legend, if you were needing to do that. But uh, luckily, I uh, have my hands on the V2, so we should be able to um, go through and do a simple install on this one and yeah let's see how it goes first thing we're gonna do um, I already took apart the uh, the stuff that is required on the DMG so we can have it open easily and what we need to do now is uh, actually tin the different holes for the the contacts um, on the new board so we can actually easily solder that when the time comes so we're going to um, already had my soldering iron preheated. Uh, you don't really need it any more than 300 degrees in the, the silliest of circumstances. <clears throat> so I, uh, I keep mine a little bit cooler than that because uh, oftentimes if you have it at 300 degrees or more, I found that the solder just tends to stick to the tip and doesn't really actually um, fill in the holes properly. And uh, what you need when you're doing a soldering job, it's already nerve-wracking enough if you haven't done a lot of soldering. Uh, you really, really want the solder to actually stick to what it's supposed to stick to. So <clears throat> we're gonna go through. And I think the key here is that you heat up the contact first. So you heat up the uh, the metal, and then you actually bring the, the solder near to it and, and use it to fill in the hole. So we're going to touch on that for a few seconds. doing its job and then we just generously fill that sucker in. I'm trying not to touch too much else on the board. I've got some unsightly stuff going on there. Oop. And last one. Okay. So we have successfully tinned all of those contacts so it will be easy for us to do the remaining soldering in a couple of seconds. So set your soldering iron aside carefully. We can unpin this and now we get to go to the big show. I don't know why I blew on it. It hardens almost instantly. So we aren't going to need this, so we're going to take this apart, um, take it off and gently set it aside. 
and I have gone ahead and for the sake of expediency removed the uh, the two screws that hold this back piece in place and we don't actually need to take this part off um, so I just left it uh, seems actually a little wiggly just one sec no, that's as tight as it needs to be <clears throat> You'll see in my vanity, I actually took a black Sharpie to this, so it actually didn't contrast <laughs> so much with the, uh, the the look of my DMG. But here we have the original power regulator board. So this guy has done a fine job for 30 years, but it is time to retire him. Uh, so we're actually going to heat up those contacts and pull this away gently um, and make sure that we keep all of this intact because we're gonna be attaching it pretty much exactly like it is on this one. So I think uh, we just wanna make sure, yeah, it's actually already got a color thing. So we've got a red one at this end and the clean power actually says red right there. So they wanna make sure that we couldn't possibly screw this up. And they made it pretty much, pretty close to the exact same size and shape as the original. So that's how it's going to look when it gets in there. So uh, makes sense because that was made to fit in that casing. So we take our soldering iron and we are going to heat up these ends and gently pull away. just pulling slightly as I go to make sure that we don't mess remove anything that shouldn't be and there we go so that is still pretty much intact I'm gonna hold on to that because that's a piece of history and uh, I'm gonna set that aside in my uh, my current DMG parts kit <clears throat> Actually, we can keep that up there so now here comes the slightly trickier part <clears throat> So we are going to be, just like the other one was, we are going to want to heat up. Might just bend this down a little bit so we can be a bit more active with it. And I may end up speeding up this segment so it's not painful for you guys to watch, but I, I tend to be incredibly careful with my soldering because I, uh, <laughs> in fact, I'm actually gonna straighten those contacts out just a smidge. <clears throat> My first few soldering experiences have made me, uh, we'll say, very cautious. Um, and again, I am purely an amateur at the best, and even saying amateur might be a little bit generous when it comes to the basic common sense stuff when it comes to soldering and consumer electronics, but I have learned a few lessons and I try and put those into play where I can. <clears throat> so. We now have this guy here, positioning it ahead of time so you set yourself up for success is probably a good plan. Make sure that your soldering iron isn't caught on anything. Let's see, there's going to be the thing. Okay, so now we have contact. Now these wires are not as far through, so I may still, kind of like we were gently pulling before, I may still heat up from the other side and gently push through as best I can. Here we go, we got some give. Go. 
So we have all of those a little bit further in than they were. They're still not completely through, but I don't think we need to do that. They're not even close to contacting with each other, and it looks like they've actually got a good contact there. So set your soldering iron carefully aside. And now is when we will replace this thing. So that is really it. They tried to make it very simple install um, and to make it again feel like you're, you're putting in the original again. Okay, so now, I'm gonna polish this one up a little bit, get the fingerprints off, and we're gonna try firing up the EverDrive. And it works just like it should. So we're gonna actually pull up Recently Played, and we're going to see how classic Super Mario Land looks on here. So, not a hitch or a flicker so far, power-wise. Turn up the brightness a little bit. Since it's working in here, I'm most likely actually going to go through and install these in my other DMGs as well. I've got two um, biverted and backlit ones, uh, one that my friend Curtis did, and then another one that I recently did myself with the, the white backlight. And I think that those ones are, are prime, prime units uh, to be able to do this with. Now, I'm kind of partly cheating because I have the, the new RIPS DMG V3 screen in this guy. Um, so, and because this is already running off of a... Uh, a completely new front PCB. Um, it's already doing some of the uh, the power processing work here, but um, a lot of what I've read about this says that uh, if you actually go into original ones that have a bivert and backlight, it actually up, ups the contrast. Um, so I'm definitely going to uh, experiment with this a little bit more. I'm not going to uninstall it from this one, but um, since they're actually fairly reasonably priced, I'm probably going to snag a couple more of these and put them in my other units because uh, whether I end up selling them or keeping them for the collection, um, either way, they're actually going to just run better. So yeah, that is my full review of the, uh, the Clean Power V2 um, power regulation board for the DMG. So if you like, um, hit like and subscribe. I uh, always have a, a good time doing these videos and being able to sort of chat with other people who are on the uh, shallower end of the learning curve like myself. So that is my first time doing this one. I broke my, my golden rule is that I always do the mod once before I do a video on it. This was literally my first time through. So you get to see, uh, get to see the first attempt and uh, through to completion. So thanks a lot for watching again and uh, I'll catch you on the next mod doing the installs to help you avoid the pitfalls.